Okay. So we are very much aware at the forum that we're largely associated with Davos, but in fact, we are busy doing things throughout the year. We work on multiple platforms, projects and initiatives throughout the year um, with our various stakeholder groups, some of which you can see on your screen right now. And one of those platforms is the strategic intelligence platform. And what we did was we realized that leaders require new tools to make better strategic decisions in an increasingly complex and uncertain environment. So we reached out to those groups, to our stakeholders and to our network to inform the content that you will find on the platform. It's a global public good in that anyone anywhere with an internet connection can sign up and access the content on the platform. But then we have inbuilt paid analytical features. And it's at this level that we've whitelisted the UN to access it at no cost. And it's these features I'm going to talk to today. So I will move now to a video. Um, Jim, I can see you on the screen. Please give me a thumbs down if there's any problems with the sound. But hopefully uh, everything works out today. And I'm going to share a short video to kick us off. In today's world, individuals and organizations have to operate in a constantly evolving environment. The overwhelming amount of information at our disposal can make it difficult to focus and prioritize, let alone understand the big picture. This makes the ability to tap into a curated global network of experts from academia, government, business and civil society a decisive strategic asset for any organization. And this is why strategic intelligence now offers advanced features that enable its users to deep dive and make sense of issues that are the most relevant to them. For example, let's say you want to understand how the Internet of Things can drive sustainability in different sectors. On our current transformation map, you will find that, by selecting thoughtful rules and standards, the Internet of Things can unlock a wide range of benefits for energy, mobility, and food systems. But let's imagine you are interested in additional sectors or in diving deeper on these topics. By creating your custom map, you can explore the dynamics most relevant to you and your organization. For instance, you might want to look into ways the Internet of Things creates sustainability opportunities for digitalization in the electricity sector, smarter infrastructure and energy efficiency in the mobility sector, the expansion of circular models, how it can help curb water waste and enable more efficient food systems. Your custom maps effectively become a dynamic monitoring framework embedded in the wider strategic intelligence ecosystem. Every day, our built-in machine learning and artificial intelligence system scans thousands of the world's most trusted research publications and pieces of analysis on hundreds of topics, allowing for the deeper exploration of your selected issues. This information is summarized in continuously updated briefings specific to each map. Strategic Intelligence Advanced Features can also help identify priority signals emerging within your areas of interest, including key clusters and trending topics. This allows you to get clarity out of complexity, stay abreast of the latest global developments, and drive strategic conversations within your organization. Start now. So I think the video explains it fairly well, but essentially what we do on the platform is we virtually represent the combined and curated intelligence drawn from our expert network with machine intelligence. And this allows users to view issues in a holistic manner, in a systemic manner, understand their interlinkages, their interconnections in the form of a transformation map, which I will show you more clearly during the demonstration. So each map covers a topic on the inner ring, associated with six to eight core key strategic issues, usually drafted by an expert, um, and then linked in the outer ring to those interconnected topics that operate in a sphere of influence. And the goal of this combination is to drive better strategic uh, decision making. So the human intelligence aspect is drawn from our over 3000 members of the expert network. You can see a bit of a breakdown of that on your screen now. 
They're drawn largely from academia, think tanks, NGOs, government, and the private sector. And you can see there as well, the UN is our third top most contributor uh, in the expert network. We're always looking at more ways to engage the experts. And um, for example, we've got events now as we become pivoted to more digital, experts are able to attend and sometimes speak in more of the events that we are hosting online. And then it's from this network that we source our co-curators. So co-curators are experts in their field and we leverage their world-class expertise to explain and demystify some of the most complex topics that we have on the platform. They have diverse backgrounds, but again, they're usually academia, NGOs, international organizations or think tanks. They are not private sector. And we're actually working with several UN bodies at the moment to co-curate maps, including UN Women, UNEP, and UNDP. Uh, and you can see we already have co-curators from IOM and the World Meteorological Organization, WMO. And then we amplify all of this with machine intelligence. So this is our in-house natural language processing machine intelligence. We scrape the feeds of over 300 trusted content partners every day at a rate of about a thousand articles a day. And then we tag these articles and the rich media and the data that our content partners are producing against the relevant maps. So you can be sure that any map you're looking at has the most up-to-date, most pressing issues reflected at the top of that feed. And I'm now going to go through and do the actual demonstration, which I think is probably, hopefully, the most useful part of today. So this is the landing page. This is a strategic intelligence platform. We have about 500,000 uh, users now, public users, and then about 15,000 private sector, sector signups and about 15,000 constituent members. We have 274 topics all in all, and these are divided into the economies, global issues, industries, and of course, the SDGs. So I thought I'd start today off with the innovation map that made sense to me. Uh, if you type into our search function, your search term. So you will see it will bring up A, the maps related to it, but it will also bring up key issues that mention innovation, publications that mention innovation, rich media, and any data that we might have as well. So it's quite a thorough search tool we have over there. So we'll start with innovation. And this is what each of the transformation maps looks like. You have this map, the inner topic, innovation in this case, and then the key issues, the human intelligence I referred to, are written over here by the co-curator. In this case, it's Nesta. And Nesta have written this content that you see here, the core strategic key issues. And the goal is that in a very concise but very thorough way, you can understand what are the core transformational issues acting upon the topic of innovation. And it, as I click through each, you can see those highlights are coming out. So it's showing you what are the various things that affect this particular key issue. So if we're looking at innovation systems, for example, you might want to deep dive into agile governance, which is co-curated by the Hurti School. Or perhaps you might want to look into the fourth industrial revolution and, and have a look at um, innovation systems from that perspective. For today, though, I thought it might be interesting to look at technological innovation. I know that that is um, um, of some interest to UNIN. And the co-curator here talks about how artificial intelligence may yet rank amongst the most historic technological advancements of our time, essentially. This platform has a suite of maps related to digital technologies. And I'm going to just go through to my favorite blockchain. It's my favorite because I like the idea of it and I don't understand it that well. So we'll start on the blockchain map. And this one is co-curated by the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, or KAIST. Same layout as you can see. I'm going to focus here a bit more on the machine intelligence aspect, which is our feed on the right hand side. So these are the over two, over 300 content partners I referred to. 
Each of them is a link directly back to the original article. We do not redirect you through ours. We do not change the title. We do not change the context. It is just a link directly back to the original content. You can narrow this feed down, for example, to tie it back to the previous map. I will search for innovation and it's gonna narrow the feed down. You can also narrow it down by language or by source. And then given the importance of blockchain and digital identity to the SDGs, uh, I'm gonna focus on this one next. And I'm going to have a look that I could relate this to our COVID-19 map, digital identity, the ability to get a COVID vaccine, a COVID passport has been quite important. I could also go through and have a look at what it means for digital identity itself and go into the digital identity map. But instead, I'm going to focus on the policy regulations. And the co-curator here is talking about how the complexity of regulating blockchain at a global level is very difficult. Different countries have different approaches and certain countries and even cities who've taken an open approach to it have done very well out of it. So that leads me to the idea that there's going to need to be global cooperation to regulate and to develop policy on blockchain. So I will go through to our global governance map. Global governance has been co-curated by the Blavatnik School of Government at the University of Oxford. Now on each of the maps you will have seen these buttons at the top. These are briefings. Some of them have an overview that that's just a short podcast overview, but all of them have a briefing document. And what that means is you can download the map as a PDF. It's very quick, but I have for, for time's sake done it before we started. This is what the PDF looks like. So you can then print this, you can save it, you could share it with anyone who doesn't have access perhaps to, to the platform yet. Um, and it gives you all the human intelligence, the summary and the various key issues, as well as with live hyperlinks to the top um, machine intelligence sourced publications that you'd find on the map. And while I'm looking at briefings, just to show you on our countries, they are exactly the same, uh, but they work slightly differently in that at the bottom of each, we have a set of standardized indicators on each country map. So if you're doing some kind of benchmarking, these standardized indicators that we draw from forum reports may well be of interest to you. So back to the map over here, uh, you can, so you've got the briefing, you can also share the map online, on Twitter, etc. You can embed it. We have a widget. We can talk to that um, slightly later. We have a pulse. This is a questionnaire over here. It enables you, if you're looking at it, to say it's perhaps missing something or you, you think it needs an extra key issue or you think it's not made all the right connections, for example. So there is an, a built-in feedback system into the maps. So continuing on the theme of complexity in governing blockchain or any international issue, I'm going to have a look over here at institutional complexity and follow this through to climate change. Climate change is co-curated with Yale University and I want to just focus on the data tab here. So with each of the maps, we do have the publications, we also have rich media, and then we have data. We've got multiple sources of data. You can see here World Meteorological uh, Organization, Resource Watch, Earth Time. Um, Earth Time is an in-house um, data story. We build these maps in partnership with Carnegie Mellon University and they're able to take any kind of raw data to forecast or review major events. So the one I'm looking at now is a climate change related one. We put it up fairly recently and it shows some really scary stats. Aside from the very useful important information you're going to find on these maps, we think that the visualization, the being able to use this and show it in a meeting or a presentation, it's really going to drive people to act more than a wordy document or a lecture is. This particular one always strikes me as you can watch in real time, this glacier just disappear. So there are multiple other data stories on the platform. We have an excellent one on migration and uh, remittances, as well as on modern slavery. Um, so some really good data stories on here. And then finally, now that I've had a look at how important clean energy is and fixing the planet is, I'm going to have a look at the 
transition to clean energy. And I'm going to finish up on the fourth industrial revolution to have a look more at technologies that can support clean energy and climate change. And from here, you could carry on deep dive into any of the associated technology maps, the 5Gs, for example, artificial intelligence, etc. But I think you get the gist of this. I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to move on to the custom maps. You saw that briefly in the video, but you have the ability to start your own custom map. So what this means is you can pull from any of the over 1000 expert curated packages of content we already have on the platform to make a map that that is relevant to your specific area of interest, project, study, etc. So I've started one already. I thought given what I'd mentioned before, we could look at the topic of innovating for technology governance. Governance. So I've just started it. You basically, you start one, you choose a title, you choose an image, and then you use the search function to start to add key issues. These are drawn, as I said, from the current maps across the platform. So I've added government innovation already. So if you search innovation, these are all of the key issues referencing innovation across the platform in the title or in the text. So I've already added government innovation. I will perhaps add technological innovation as well. And then given what we're talking about, I'm also going to search for information technology. And I'm going to add, let's go to the top, digital policy and governance and valuing digital equity. And then I might just search one more keyword, digital. Go to the top and just have a look at what's here. I'll add connectivity and coverage and sustainable communications. We don't recommend more than eight just because it becomes too busy, but six to eight, I've done this obviously very quickly. I would encourage you to take the time to read the full key issue before you decide if it's relevant. But once you've done this, you can then save and close. And now you have a map of your very own looking at your intersection of interests. It's updated with content every day like all of the other maps across the platform but it's personal to you it's not going to be visible to anyone else using the platform so here is our map as you can see it's already populated with the expert packages we've drawn from across the system if you look at it you can see what the parent topics of what the original map is that this package of content has been drawn from and this feed is going to update every single day and beyond create, we also have monitor. So this is like a real-time curated feed, bringing you the most interesting up-to-date collection of signals and articles on the topics that you follow. So at the moment, my filter is just set to all of the topics, but I could narrow it down very quickly. Say I want to look at geoeconomics and you will see the feed will instantly change to reflect what I'm looking at and you can choose any number of the topics that you're looking at uh, that you're following and then it will show you these are the signals this is the main topic that's coming out for example on Iran's election here are the various sources that are referencing it here are the maps that are relevant to it and here's direct links to those articles that are referenced above and I'm almost done I promise just a couple more things to point out the one is that you now have access to events, so you won't see many up there. I think everything is quieting down a bit for summer, but you can attend events, whichever one that shows up here, nothing will show up here that's not available to you to attend. So you can click on it and then you explore further. You will be directed to top link. You sign in with your same details and you can have a look at the program and decide if you want to register. So that is events and also we have language. So everything you've seen, is available in multiple different languages. It's not just English, so it's a little bit more open to a global audience. All right, I'm going to stop there and open it up for questions, and I hope that was useful.